Amen. God bless us. You know, there, there is something I, I, I want us to look at. It, it is an aspect of the life of man that every human being desires on earth. Everybody, both everyone that is born, you know, strives to obtain victory. You know, I, if I may ask, let me just get somebody's point of view. If, if I will, if I will ask Peace Airline that if you are told just to dissect the word victory, what do you really see as victory as a Christian? What, what would you say? Victory. Victory. If I just say I'm victorious, that means I would have had a struggle with so many and I came on top. Okay. So I call myself victorious. Okay. Yeah. And sure, and that's victory. Struggle and you came on top. Is there anybody that has any other view? Uh, we have a learned colleague here. Maybe he will dissect victory for us. Victory. If I tell you now as a Christian, victory, how do you, what, what, what do you tell me victory? I think, I, think I, can only, I can only look at it from the legal point of view. Hmm. They don't from come. That angle, I think I can say um, whenever we have matters before a judge, it is always, sure. it, it is always, it is always the plaintiff against the defendant okay. or the applicant against the respondent. Just whoever, re reduce, carry who, and go down to our level. Thank whoever, you. Fire. Whoever, it is either Mr. A or Mr. And Mr. B uh -huh. against Mr. B, and whoever wins is victorious. Is victorious. So. Okay, hallelujah. Is there any sister that will just give us an insight also into victory, 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 victory? Is there any sister that will tell us they say sister, yeah, victory? Victory. Okay, victory. Somebody that was set free from captivity. Okay, somebody that was set free from the captive. Okay, from the captive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, there's another sister here. There's another sister here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we talk about victory, victory means that when you have been tried in many ways. When you have been tried, tried in, many ways, in many ways. As a child of God. Okay, as a child of God. There is a lot of challenges that will come on your ways. And you are able to, despite the challenges, you are able to overcome it. When you overcome it, that means you are victorious. That Praise means you are victorious. Okay, somebody wanted to say something here. Let's hear her. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a fight, a battle. A fight, Kai. That when you contended with the, somebody or devil, and okay. at the end of it, you come out victorious. At the end of it, you come out victorious. Can we clap our hands for all of our brethren? I know more people has, uh, a lot of people still have something to say, but... And the truth is, each and every of those definitions, all those definitions are right. Uh, do, do you understand? Victory. There is a struggle. A legal colleague, you know, he must always look at um, his contention in the court of law. Hallelujah. You know, now everything said is victory. And the truth is, when you, once you come up with the word victory, not just believers, not just Christians, in every, everything that pertains to life, in your struggle, in your career, the businessman there has the word victory in his dictionary because he wants to succeed. He wants to be on top. Now, when he does that and breaks through, he says he's victorious. Just like we said, that's why I say every definition here is correct. When an Nawi man succeeds and builds a factory, he says, nah, I alive, go. is he alive or arrive? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, in your career, you would want to get to the peak of your career. If you don't get there, you will not rest. You want to... You come here, you are praying, God, promote me, God, promote me, God, promote me. You want to be victorious. Do you understand? 
36. Hallelujah. So everybody will always want to break forth and emerge victorious. But let's just pause a little and then bring it now to the scriptures. And then let's dissect the word victory. So we'll be looking at a topic I call victory indeed. Victory indeed. Hallelujah. Victory indeed. Can you open your Bible to 1 John chapter 5 verse 4? And as you be on your feet, as our custom is, and the Lord will bless you. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. Just start, be on your feet with your Bible. Just be on your feet with your Bible. Thank you. God bless you. First John chapter 4, chapter 5, verse 4. And I read. He said, For whatsoever is born of God. Listen carefully. Is somebody with me? Is somebody with me? He said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Follow that scripture very well. He said, now he now said, now there is a colon there. Semi, no, that's a colon, not a semicolon. There's a colon. Now, if he said, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and there is a colon, then it means that the next statement that will come forth is a deeper insight to the first paragraph. It's like a, another light into the next paragraph. So he's trying to say, he's trying to explain what he means by, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. How? He said, and this is the victory. He's not telling you where the overcoming power comes from. He said, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Even our faith. You can equally say that our Christian faith. And if you are looking at our faith as Christians, our faith is buried or laid on a revelation of who Jesus is. So if you are looking at the victory that overcomes the world, that is our faith, that it means that it is embodied in the man Christ. That was 100% man and 100% God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Victory indeed. Now, what is the purpose or what will this topic, victory indeed, achieve? Why should we begin to look at victory? Because naturally you want to look at it as it's not, it's not in there now, no be victory. Now, if you will catch the understanding of what it truly means to be victorious scripturally, it will help you to be focused. It will help you to understand who you are on earth. It will help you to understand your purpose on earth. And it will help you to wave away distractions. Because the truth is, in this age that we live in, it is only a scheme of the enemy. It is something that is designed by Satan. That is why you will always say, if you are praying for things to get better, better rather, then just know that it is a mirage or a marriage. You are only looking at an illusion that will not, you know, become reality. You only place your hope on God that God will provide and keep you in place. Because it is a design by Satan. And for your information, Satan didn't design it for the world. Because he has an agenda. He designed it that things will be too difficult. So that he will make it so difficult for believers that will refuse to cut corners. Because as it is right now, the world and the world system is so rotten and messy that you have to cut corners for you to make it. Then if you want to stand as a believer, that is why we always pray. That is why you shouldn't miss vigils. Because we know the devices of the enemy then you have to come and cry unto your God that he will direct your path because he still has power 
Because there is a promise for you to succeed on earth. But Satan will make it difficult. Not for any other thing. Now, the day you will come to understand that Satan's agenda on earth has nothing to do with an unbeliever over there. That every single thing that you see that is going wrong on planet earth, spiritualize it. And you will suddenly see that that agenda is meant to cause the children of God to deviate from following their God correctly and rightly. The day you catch it, Satan has no business. When you think Satan came now to be pursuing people, no. Every agenda on earth, any invention on earth, anything you see on earth that proceeds from the pit of hell is targeted at you, a Christian. Because he knows he cannot stop you. But he knows he can cause you to make your God to stop you by making you to be, not to be at peace with your God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So now when you catch that, when you understand that, then you now know how to move with him. So then, 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 how do we now look at victory scripturally? Why, how do we follow victory? Indeed, scripturally. First, if you are looking at the word victory, then you have to look at the originator of victory. God himself, if whatever thing is born of God overcometh the world, and the victory that overcometh the world is our faith, then it means that if you are born of God and you are an overcomer, it means that he that gave birth to you is an overcomer. Do, do you understand now? So if you would understand victory and the purpose of victory, then you have to look at he that is victorious. Then let me, okay, ah, let me come this way. Let me come this way. Now, you understand this, that in the beginning, or let me say even in the realm, before the beginning began, there was a being that no human mindset has the ability or the capacity to dissect who he was, how he came into being. No human mindset can step into the realm of who he is. It is deeper than the creation on, of planet earth. It is a mystery that is even beyond the spirit realm. The person of God. Now, that God, at times when we say things like this, some people misunderstand us. When we say that that God in the beginning was not God. You say, ah, what are you trying to say? Now, 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 it does not mean that he doesn't have the ability or the attribute to be God. But God is an English word. So I would say he was not God in the beginning, but yet he is supreme. He is even greater because God is a human terminology to describe a being that we worship. Do, do you understand? So he is even beyond. Now, and if God is greater than our own human intellect, and the best we know him is God, then it means he is more than what we see him. Uh, do you understand? So he is a self-existing being from the beginning that has the attribute of being God. And he created angels that worship him because God is an object of worship. But yes, we know there are gods that are irrelevant. But he is the supreme deity of all deities. Uh, do, do you understand? That great eternal spirit that Elohim that has those attributes also has so many attributes but that's not where I'm going to he has the attribute of being a warrior he's a man of war uh, do you understand he has the attribute of being a father he created man and so on now I also believe that if we that are born of him are declared overcomers then in him is an attribute to overcome and in displaying that attribute of an overcomer, I believe he also created man that became his child, his children, and then he became a father. And from the beginning, he knew that man will fall. And remember, God does not concede defeat. He cannot be defeated. I, I hope you know that. The Bible says with him, all things are possible. So he already knows the agenda. So if Satan was coming... 
to hijack the dominion and the authority that he has given unto man. Satan was only playing according to God's script that has been written for him to display and manifest his attribute of being a victorious God. God told them in the Garden of Eden that the day ye shall eat of this fruit, he said, ye shall die, that day you will die. He said, that day you will die. And Satan came and told them, no, 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 through the serpent. He said, you shall not surely die. And when Eve ate it, did they die physically? But did they truly die that same day? They died that day. They died that day. Do you understand? They died that same day. Hallelujah. So in essence, the death, the Bible said that he that takes part in the first resurrection, he said the second death has no power over him. That is the death he overcame. That is the death he swallowed up in victory. That is why as Christians we don't fear death. If one truly has received the spirit, Paul the apostle said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Ah. Ibo man we only build skyscraper for village and everywhere go say, ah, nambao. Do you understand? Now Jesus, Chelukwa. Do you understand? But the truth is, when that is why there was an ability in the life of every Christian when you are pushed to the wall and you are truly born of God. In God is the anointing of a lion. In the spirit is the anointing of a calf. In the spirit is the anointing of wisdom, the face of a man. In the spirit is an eagle anointing. Now when you are pushed to the wall, and that situation requires anything at all. The Spirit of God manifests the ability that we counter it. That is why they were willing to lay down their lives then when they were killed. And those that are still killed now. It's an anointing, it's a power. Hallelujah. So the death that was swallowed up, not be this physical death because we Christians, we sleep. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall, and we shall be changed. He said, for, verse 53, he said, for this corruptible must put on incorruptible. And this mortal must put on immortality. Is somebody not happy? Is somebody not happy? Verse 54. He said, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought here now. Paul the apostle was so revelated. And he began to dissect what Isaiah meant. You now understand? You now understand what Isaiah meant in Isaiah 25. Verse 8, when he said that the, uh, death has been swallowed up by victory. Now, now, Paul the Apostle is now explaining it to you better. He said, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. He was quoting Isaiah 25. He said, oh death, where is your sting? Death came after a sinless man and stung that sinless man and thought that he will end his ministry on earth. Not knowing that by taking him away, it was only the beginning of his ministry. <laughs> that is the joker of God. <laughs> God placed his joker and sat and picked it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, oh death, where is your string? Oh grave, where is thy victory? He said, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then let me read verse 58. He said, therefore, therefore, now when you catch this, what do you have to do? Because let me end from, let me end here. What do you have to do when you have caught this? He said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work 
of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Then look at what verse 55 said. He said, you know, verse 56. He said, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Let's see James chapter 1, verse 15. Let me show you something there. Why he made that statement. James chapter 1, verse 15. Look at something. How is this thing of death sin? James chapter 1 said from verse 15. Verse 15 says, Then when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. The Bible said that we are not of the world, though we are in the world. He said, Anyone that is a friend of God is an enemy with God. He said, For friendship with the world is enmity with God. For those, those things that are in the world, he said, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, he said, they are not of him. So you understand when he says lost, it also speaks of the quest for material gain also. Hallelujah. They said, then when loss had conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. When lost conceived, get belly, it go born sin. When sin don't come out, it will produce death. And that is that which Christ came to swallow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. So you have to understand this. Our victory, there's a statement I wrote down. You know, say our victory lies in our ability to see our destiny. Your victory as a Christian lies in your ability to see your destiny. And what is the destiny of a Christian? Pastor preached a message. Go and get that message. The destiny of a Christian. Am I right? Up to... You are saying something. It is to be conformed to the image of the it is, Son. Thank you very much. And that is exactly where I was going to. God bless you, sir. It means you're listening to pastor. Pastor preached a message. The destiny of a Christian. He said, our, if it, he said, our victory lies... In our ability to see our destiny. Now when you see your destiny, that is where your victory lies. And that is all what I've been saying in a nutshell. And the destiny, like I said, pastor preached a message, the destiny of a Christian. The destiny of a Christian is to be conformed to the image of Christ. The Bible says, for they which he foreknew, Romans chapter 8, he said he predestinates to be conformed to the image of of his son. And those people which he foreknew, those which he predestined to be conformed to that image, those people he justifies. And the ones he justifies, the Bible says he glorifies. So, your, for you to, your ability in obtaining victory is the ability of seeing your destiny. Hallelujah. So now, when that happens, how do you have to walk? Your focus should be somewhere. Now when you understand where your victory lies as a Christian, that if seek ye face the kingdom of God, every other thing is a distraction. We are pilgrims on earth. We are pilgrims on earth. That is whom we are. We are only pilgrims on earth. Now when you catch that, then you will understand why John the Beloved in the spirit when God began to show him things that has been and that was and that shall be when Christ appeared to him and declared whom he was and displayed his, his deity to John then you understand why a statement was made in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 and said, and they overcame, and after everything, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the words of their testimony. Hello, let me tell you this. Before you begin to pray, and because all you want to do is to succeed. Listen, the reason why this message is important that you will follow it is so that you will not get entangled with the struggles of life and you'll be distracted 
from the focus of where your destiny lies. Because they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. They were not overcoming devils to succeed. From all ages, when they overcame by the blood of the Lamb, because it is through the blood that they received an ability, a sustainable ability, an ability that will preserve them. There is a preservative that will keep them in the blood of the Lamb. That is what enhanced and empowered them to overcome. That is where they obtained victory. They were born because there is a life in that blood. They, were, they overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. How is it the words of their testimony? The words of their testimony is their daily walk with Christ. Looking up to him, knowing that they were pre pilgrims on earth. They mind the life that they live. Somebody, because I'm speaking to you that is listening to me, that you have dwelt too much. God is telling you, my son that has been on the ground, where did you keep your first love? That you have dwelt too long. That is the same thing. He screamed at me and said, what is wrong with you? You are becoming messy. Get up and move on. You have dwelt too long on that place. And he's telling you somebody listening to me. That that life is only coming to warn you also. Because he said, our God is a consuming fire. The scripture says, knowing the terror of God. He said, we persuade men. We persuade men so that you will not get to a point whereby you say, I, I was so close and I missed it. No. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. The lives they lived, they kept pressing unto perfection. Unto perfection. That is what, when you understand your victory, then you have to press towards it. You have to endeavor. You have to strive. You have to know that we are pilgrims. The day you will catch that revelation, you will not have high BP. You will not have high BP. The day you will catch that revelation, you will enter into the realm that King Solomon stepped into and saw vanity and he screamed, vanity upon vanity, say all is vanity. The depth of vanity is spiritual. He entered into a realm that Satan uses to cajole men and hypnotize them and cause them to live differently from that which God has ordained them to be and live. The day you will catch that, the day you will catch it, you will not weep and say, God, why me? The day you will catch it, even in the worst situation, you will sing songs of glory like the three Hebrew children that told King Nebuchadnezzar, that king, listen, even if our God does not deliver us, because they have caught a revelation of who their God is, and they have given their totality to him, and they have sworn by an oath. You know, the day you decided to make the Lord Jesus Christ your Lord and your personal savior, you only swore by an oath to live for him, to make him your only God. Have you deviated from that? Hallelujah. Because right now you understand what Romans chapter 7 began to tell us how the flesh is struggling with the spirit and the spirit is struggling with the flesh. One wants to be dominant. But the apostles scream, no wretched man like me who shall deliver me. Who shall deliver him. But he said, thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What is this supposed to do to you, brother, sister? What is this supposed to do to you? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Let me round up with these three scriptures. What is this supposed to do to you? 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. He is God. He is God. There is none like him. Verse 24. He said, know ye not that they which run in a race. Victory. Now, this is where your victory lies. Child of God, this is a victory you should struggle for on planet Earth. You are a big dream. Ah. He said, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. He said, so run. He said, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. 
Now, they that do, do, do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we, they, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Ah, do you understand now? He said, I therefore, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty. When you catch this revelation, you are running with hope. Because the Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is a hope you are running with. He said, he does not run with uncertainty. He is confident of where he is going to. Just like Abraham heard a voice. And he knew that that voice was the voice of the creator. And he did not listen to anything. He said, begin to go to a city. And Abraham began to go with hope. The Bible says he staggered not at the promises of God. He began to sought for a city. That is what Paul the Apostle said he is doing. He said he was, he's not running with uncertainty. He is running with a confidence knowing that there is something he is going to obtain. Hallelujah. 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 He said, I therefore run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as that, not as one that beateth the air. He said, but I keep under my body. This is the kind of fight he's, he fights. And that is the fight every believer should fight. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it under into, and bring it into subjection. Least that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. And when he said, when I have preached to others, it, you are not speaking of only coming to the pulpit to preach. Every Christian is a preacher. If you are born in Christ, you are a preacher. Which message are you preaching? Are you, which message are you preaching? Which message are you preaching? The life you live is a preach, is a message rather. So that when I preach to others, so listen to me, I'm talking to you that has been living a life that is dirty before God and you've been crying. Some of us are crying unto him to break us forth from that besetting sin. You've been unable to break out of it. Today, there is an ability to break out of it. I am telling you confidently. I said this morning, there is an ability that will cause you to break out of it. If only you will desire. Because you will break out of it. He's talking to you. He's saying, my child, come to me. And let me give you the ability to live right as I have ordained you to live. That you will, be, you will live to conform to the image of my son. Do you understand? And that is what he said. So that you will not be a castaway. Then you will now understand Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He said, Wherefore sin we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us lay it aside. Lay it aside. It is a command from the Lord because he knows there is a sin that will easily beset you and drop you to the ground and rubbish you and destroy your integrity. It happens to all of us. But you come to him to the throne of grace to obtain power, the ability. And he's telling you today, the ability is available even now to obtain, to overcome besetting sins. Hallelujah. He said, uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which thought so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In doing that, he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That is where it lies. It is the foundation, the author and the finisher. For who, the, for, for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And remember, if you are in him, the Bible said you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers. Christ speaks to his own. Now look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7. He said, but what things we are gained to me, those things I can't lost for Christ. Yeah, that is what every believer should do. I can't lost for Christ. For the, uh, I can't lost. Yeah, doubtless. And I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. My Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that I might win Christ. And we continue. He said that I might win Christ. That I might win Christ. Your victory as a Christian 
is a journey that you do everything within your powers to overcome sin. It is a journey from earth to glory. There is somewhere you are going to. But the apostle said he count everything done. Everything. Everything. Done. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. He said that he may win Christ. Now when you hear him say Christ, when you see that word Christ, that I may win Christ, what is Christ? That statement Christ means the anointed one. Am I right? The anointed one. And what makes him the anointed one? Remember, it is already by prophecy. And when it is by prophecy, they were waiting for their Messiah, who is going to be the anointed one. And which means it is the Christ. Now, if he said that I might win Christ, what is he trying to say? That I might win Christ. And the meaning of Christ is the anointed one. And what made him the anointed one? It is the spirit of God that was in him. For the Bible said, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, 1 Timothy, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 3, verse 16, he said, for without controversy, he said, God was manifest in the flesh. It is God, it is he, God, that indwelt him, that made him the anointed one. So if Paul the Apostle is saying that, that he may win Christ, which is the anointed one, that was, the Bible said he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Bible said Christ is the image of the invisible God. And, and, and Paul the Apostle said that, that he may win Christ. What is he trying to win? He's talking of the anointing. The anointing, what anointing? The spirit that indwelled him. Which means he's saying that, that he may win the spirit. What does he mean by winning the spirit? That he may win God. Because God is that spirit. Because he is a spirit. John chapter 4 verse 24 said that God is a spirit. And they that worship him was worship him in spirit and in truth. So that he may win the spirit and he is holy. That he may win the Holy Spirit. That great God. And if he's saying that he may win him, it means he's trying to say that, that I might have a relationship with him. That is what he's trying to say. That I will have a relationship with him. That I will win him. Because it is in having a relationship with him on earth that you can actively walk on to perfection. Like Second Peter chapter 1 said. That you can actually walk on to perfection. It is in winning Christ that you can gain a knowledge of whom he is. It is in winning him that you can now begin to see through his eyes. Because when we are consistent, it takes us to a state whereby we see through his eyes. Whereby we feel through him. Whereby we hear through him. Whereby we perceive through him. Because we are to look and become like him. He said that I might win Christ. Let me continue. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Where, where was I? Verse 8. He said that I might win Christ. Verse 9. He said, and be found. You, you, you hear now. You hear now. And be found in him. And be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. But that which is true, the, the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of the of God by faith he said that I may know him I love this scripture this very verse 10 has been a scripture that I've had for years more than 20 years even when I found myself in Christ Satan is wicked but I thank God when God has an agenda in your life you cannot be defeated because I encountered the Lord Jesus Christ at the age of 12 nobody preached to me it was an encounter I'll not go to that. They need to have an opportunity. I'll explain it. At the age of 12, I had an encounter with Christ in secondary school. At, I was in GS2 then. If I'm going home and I enter any of these long buses at the age of 12, I go enter, they preach till I get home. At times, I need to pay. People struggle to pay for me. I remember one day I was going to school in the morning. At times, I used to follow my in-laws staff bus. CBN. He was working in CBN then before he died. That their long staff bus. The day I didn't follow that staff bus, I remember I entered a bus and I began to preach. One small thing like this where you go, they look, they find who they preach in JS2. I saw one, one man at the back conk the son. Oh, the boy say yeah. He said, no be your mate. They preach so. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, but at that age, I remember at the age of 12 praying for Somebody that a, a student, we were radical. 
during break, we enter classes, they preach, they conduct deliverance. Praying for a young boy that had heart problem and he, and he was healed. So I experienced God at that age. The first time I knew that somebody can fall under anointing was at the age of 12. To me, it was also a mystery. Because the day where I lay hand, the person for I want to run. I can't come back. I can't say not true. Fire, fire. You know, it's a long story. But along the line, I defeated and became worse than the most rugged men on earth. Then God still rearrested me again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now you have to catch that. So this has been my scripture for a long while. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Say, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I am reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of Jesus Christ. And that is what everybody should press towards. Where is your destiny? Your destiny as a Christian is to be conformed to the image of Christ. Pick, go and get that tape, pastor, preach on the destiny of a Christian. Listen to it again. It is enriching. If you don't see it at the tape stand, go to the IT department. They have it in soft copy. They will download it on your phone. Listen to it. They have almost four parts. The destiny of a Christian. Listen to it more. You know, you, your, your victory is to overcome sin. Your victory is to overcome death. Your victory is to make it. Your victory is to be in the regeneration. Your victory is when mortality puts on immortality. Strive to walk unto perfection. When we get to heaven... Adam are a supper, all the saints shall gather at the last assembly. No more such party, no more heartbreaking. There were two sorrow, victory is ahead. When we get to heaven at the marriage supper, all the saints shall gather at the last assembly. No more such party, no more heartbreaking. Farewell to sorrow. Victory is ahead. 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 No more such parties. No more. I saw a trophy that appeared in the spirit right now as I was singing. It means he's promising victory unto someone. Even right here, even right now. It means he's only announcing you this is answer to that prayer you have prayed to him. And you have told him that God give me the overcoming ability. And he's telling you that it has been released unto you. When we get to heaven... At the marriage supper, all the saints shall gather at the last assembly. No more such part. Yes, sir. I saw an eagle in the spirit now. Oh, farewell to sorrow. Victory. 
maybe you want to tell him daddy i need that overcoming power whoever that overcoming power and as a christian you want to live right you want him to empower you and endow you with that grace anywhere you are pour out your soul to him and if you feel like coming to the altar to tell him lord i am here maybe somebody wants to make it so serious so that god will know that papa no i'm not gonna just sit down you are free you want to sit down you are free you, you want to stay there you are free you want to come here and talk to him you are free only you knows how you want to do it you tell him daddy i want to live for you i want to live for you the ability to overcome the ability i saw an eagle in the spirit released no more heartbreaking yeah we to sorrow victory is i want to know you more i want to know you more and more I want to know you more. I want to know you more and more. Know you. I want to know you more. Yes, sir. See restoration. 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 I want to know you more. 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 Take my life and let it be consecrated unto Thee. Take my moment and my day. I belong to you, Lord. Take my life. Pour out your soul and let it be consecrated unto Thee. Take my moment, take my day. Again, I give you my soul over and again, over and again. I belong over and again. I give you, I give you my soul. I give you over and again, over. From the depth of your spirit, just open your mind and talk to Jesus. There is an overcoming power released. Released, released to you, released to you. Talk to him, Lord. I am a pilgrim on earth. I am a pilgrim, Lord. Forget those things that you have been going through. Forget those things that have traumatized you. Tell him, Lord, let me obtain victory. From earth to glory. That ability, that ability, Papa. Ah, cry to him, somebody. Cry out your soul. He's by your side. 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 Jesus, I want to be a better Christian. Oh, help me that area that you have spoken to me and told me to wake up it is him you are talking to make sure your heart is poured to him it's a race victory victory indeed 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 Victory indeed. Oh, help me, Lord. Victory indeed. Lord. 
Lord, Lord, prepare me. A sanctuary. Pure and holy. Tried and true. We then I'll be a living sanctuary. Give talk me to him. the I'm power somebody to do. Time. Just talk to him. This is the prayer of a Christian. Oh, Lord, this is the prayer of a Christian. This is the prayer of a Christian. My end is dry. This is my end. My end is desire. This is my end as desire. Give me the power to do. Father, let your mercy rest upon us. We've dwelt too long, O oh Lord, on that mountain. Let your mercy rest upon us. Father, our souls and our hearts are poured out to you over and over again. And we dedicate our being to you, Jesus. That we will live for you with desire, the ability, the power in these trying days, Lord. That you will help us to overcome. We ask for your grace, Lord. We ask for your grace, Lord. Somebody's soul, somebody's just going deep and deep. I want to stop and I'm seeing somebody still going deep and going deeper and going deeper and going deeper and going deeper and, going deeper and reaching out your hands and the hearts of the spirit to touch the Lord. And when you touch him with your heart, even now, that life can never remain the same. An ability will rest on you even this morning that will cause you to become a different man over again. And there will be total and complete restoration once again. And today, there will be a revival. Your heart will burn like fire once more. The glory of the Lord will incubate your being. His power will take over you. And His name will be glorified in your life once again. Because He is the Lord of your life. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, you go back. And remain because His Spirit has taken over you. If you don't mind, if you can be on your feet, everyone. And take this prayer point. You ask Him to give you the power to overcome sin. The power to look upwards. The Bible said that when you follow Him, what does He give you? He gives you eternal life in the regeneration and in this world. How, what does he give you? An hundredfold. You will tell him also, Father, give me the ability to obtain victory while I await your coming. Are you ready to pray that? Which area, if what I just exposed to you is the truth? Lord Jesus, see me true. Keep me true. Talk to him, talk to him. Which area do you want him to give you victory on earth now? And see what happens. And that prayer, you will not pray it twice. Pray it once now. Something will happen. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. 
Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Hallelujah. Did you just talk to him, somebody? And so shall you receive victory. In your career, you will overcome. In every area of your life, you shall overcome. In your business, you will overcome. In your family, you will overcome. In your health, you will overcome. The devil will not make you their, their stool in the name of Jesus. Anywhere your case will be deliberated over in the spiritual realm, God will speak for you. Jesus has won victory for you. The Bible says you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And so shall it be your portion. If you believe that you are an overcomer, if you believe that you are victorious, can you give the Lord a shout?